Hi there guys, Tom Quill here for the Guitar Hour and I'm here with the amazing Dave Wiener. Hi Dave. Hello. How are you doing? Also joined obviously by Mr. Dave Bronze, Mr. Dan Smith and of course Mr. David Beebe. Sorry for the shaky cam guys, I'm holding this. Hey now we've asked Mr. Wiener, he's on tour with Steve Vai at the moment for the Passion of Warfare 25th anniversary tour, very exciting. We've asked him to show us his rig so uh, as opposed to me shoving the camera in his face and pointing at him like this, we're going to go straight ahead, go down to the pedal board. So we're going to look down here and we'll have a look at Dave's new pedal board. So we'll do that now. Right. Okay, so this is your new pedal board put together for this particular tour. Do you want to tell us all about it? Right. Um, it, it, um, it needed to be compact, but of course still flexible, powerful, all that kind of stuff and handle all the effects for the show. Sure. So, um, I don't know, we'll, we'll just kind of go through uh, from right to left okay. here. So I'm I'll using this, this in. Dunlop, um, this, I guess this is called the Volume X, which is a great, you know, it's just a really nice volume pedal, very smooth feeling, which doesn't really affect anything that much, but it's always nice. And it's running in the loop of the ah. amp instead of in front of it so that I can bring the master volume down without losing any gain, so I can... like that so Tasty. it's not affecting any of the preamp as I as I move it up and down sure. which is always a nice thing to do okay um, and then I'm uh, well again it's just, this is not in order of like the signal path but I'm just kind of going that way yep um, this is a standard Dunlop crybaby what do they call it it's not the classic it's the uh, I guess it's just called the standard okay I mean it's the, the cheapest one I got a bunch of new uh, Cry Babies from Dunlop before the tour and tested a whole bunch out. They're all great. The classic, which is just a different phasal inductor, uh, the new Petrucci one, which was awesome. Wow. Um, but just I, I, the one I chose for the tour was just the standard one. I came back to the absolute basic. Nice. And um, and it just works well because you know we do a thing in the song in the show called build a song and people come up yep. and they kind of you know tell Steve different parts and they'll tell Jeremy different parts and they'll tell me different parts and my my part is. Uh, it has come always back to like a a simple wah, a wah like a funk, yeah. And these classic, uh, not sorry, not the classic. I, I want to be you know specific about it because it's not the classic. It's just the standard one. Mm -hmm. um, it just works really well for that. Sure. And and everything else. Okay, good. That's why I'm using that. Um, this is the Keeley Monterey, which is like a bunch of Hendrix effects in one box. So it does fuzz, it does octave up and down, it does rotary, it does uh, vibe, wow. um, it does a bit of wah, it does auto wah, it does, did I say fuzz? Uh, been the first no, thing I not baby. <laughs> um, but what I'm using it for is the auto wah. So we do a song called The Riddle in uh, Passion Warfare, and it's, it's this. You know, that kind of thing, which mm -hmm. is just really... Yeah. Um, and then up here is the, the Keeley uh, Compressor Pro, which I love. Let's get in on because that one. Because I, I love compressors that give me the same features that I find in the compressors I use in a studio. Yes. So when I can find one that has threshold ratio, attack release, you know, a, a gain, uh, this has an auto setting, so it kind of takes everything out of the equation, but I, I, I like to set it up uh, okay. you know, myself. Uh, hard and soft knee, threshold indicator, which is awesome, and then an actual you know, dB reduction meter. Right, so it's so just DB super meter. handy. Yeah. Um, and for a lot of people, a lot of players, you know, compression is awesome. It's awesome for guitar, and a lot of players don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, understandably so. But when you have something like that, where you're getting all sorts of indications, like the threshold indicator and the reduction meter, it just kind of helps players hear what is happening yep. and how much yeah, yeah. of it. So it's a great thing. It's a great compressor. You know, I've been using the Ego, the Wampler Ego, for many, many years. That was on the board last time you guys were here. Yeah, that's right. Still have them at home, the great ones, but I just decided to switch it over to this one. Okay. Uh, then a pair of Eventide H9s, yes. which are, you know, as I, as I, let me get back to my first bank here. Um, so as I scroll through, it's doing a lot of different stuff. This is, this is, this one is mostly reverbs. Right. Uh, this one is going through a lot of different stuff, so, um, I don't hear, I don't even think this one's engaged for my basic clean, but I'll step on a chorus. 
Okay. And now it's giving me, this is called 70s guitar chorus. It's a, it's a pretty subtle chorus, actually. And then uh, I'll flip it over and we do a song called Racing the World where I need these crystals. Nice. So, so are they combining there to do the crystals, or is one doing crystals and one's doing reverb? Or right something? now, one is doing the crystals into the into the reverb. Okay, that's a, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then for my lead, it goes over to a, a, a certain delay. Yes. You know, nice. So it's there. This lead overdrive is the same delay, but with an overdrive pedal. Yep. And then my rhythm is a different delay with just a little bit more subtle. So there's still a little delay there, but that's for just you know, rhythm stuff. So it's not, nothing's going to get in the way, but there's still a little bit of ambience underneath it. Are those, are those H9s big. maxed out? Do you have everything they, on there? They are so the H9 maxes, yes. You can play yeah. to your heart's content. You can, absolutely. And I use them, uh, like here's um, this patch called Octave, which I use for a song called Gravity Storm. So it's an octave down. Expression pedal hooked up to it because I also use it as a whammy. Yeah. So that got rid of, you know, think about what it, your, your board would have to get huge if you wanted something that just did crystals and chorus, and then you would have to, you know, the whammy pedal, yeah, of yeah. course. Um, so again, being space conscious, sure. shoving everything into these H9s, they are, you know, the, the VIPs, or not the VIPs, sorry, the MVPs. Of the of the pedal board world, They're, they they just do everything. Sure, um, and they do it they do it very well. Phaser. And here's a long delay for a song called uh, "Audience Is Listening." And those are all set up in the loop. Yes. How, how are you running? We'll talk about the amps in a minute. But how are you running those? With, that you've have you got those into? They must be running into both amps. So how have you split those? No. That's not how that Just works. in the Friedman. The okay. Marshall is purely backup. Okay. It's not on. There's nothing, awesome. there's no cabling into it. It's Everything is just going straight. So somebody has to desperately cable things up if that all goes. Yes, yeah. Up over yeah. There. Well, it's a quick swap from yeah, one yeah, to the yeah, other, sure. and, and, and Jared is so always we'll talk very about that ready. In a minute. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, anything else you want to show us on it? Well, you've, uh, you've got three. Yeah, we'll get. Uh, so I'm using um, three mini pedals just because yep. they're cute and fun Let's and also very, those. very good. I'm actually not using the Tube Screamer okay. unless. Uh, for right now, because the Friedmans that I'm using are the, the uh, BE-100. Yep. Over the years that I've gotten to know it, I just don't feel like it needs color in front of it for an overdrive. Of course, sure. depending on what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, I will use this if we do fly dates and I have to rent a Marshall or something like that. I like to put a tube screamer in front of that. So my main, like this lead overdrive sound for my main lead mm -hmm. is uh, the Wampler DB Plus. Just pushing the front Just end. a little bit up. Oh yeah, in front really? Of the, a tiny bit? Yeah, wow. not much at all. It doesn't yeah. need much. Um, but just to push the front end of yep. the BE just a little bit, a little bit, it also gives it a little bit of a volume boost as well. Sure. So here's the lead without it. With it, it's almost imperceivable, yeah, yeah. but to the to feeling feel is there, yep. and there's a little bit, just a, a, a little bit more gain from being pushed sure. in the front end yeah, a little bit. Sense. And then the uh, the Tumnus, the Wampler Tumnus, is uh, I'm using it right now over the clean channel for this patch uh, that I have called Grit. Really sings. Yeah, it's a really cool pedal. So you got the drive pretty high there, actually. Yeah, that one. That one's pretty cranked. Yeah, uh, as far as the drive is concerned. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And then the, just the tuner. Um, yeah. We need to talk about the G2 as well, but the yes, tuner. Yes, we will. And then, yeah. Um, the Peterson Stomp Classic. What's the expression pedal doing on the far left? Uh, it's hooked up to this H9. Right. And depending on the patch, it's doing different things. Mostly like a wetness, okay. wet dry mix yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Like for my lead here. Default is zero, yep. and then I can bring it up yep. to, to 100% or, or get really nice and wet with it. But I believe, like, 
what's programmed in the actual patches, like 10%. Not okay. much, not cool. much at all. And then tell us about the G2, because that's also new so for the you. G, yes, yeah, so the G2 is a, is a different switcher that I'm using for this tour, um, which is awesome, and uh, you know, Daniel and the gig rig. The whole thing, by the way, is powered by the gig rig's power supply. Right, so everything, the H9s and, yeah. yeah, everything, and it's great because it's just coming out of right here, yep, exactly where it says power. We love it. <laughs> Uh, we like to be super obvious with all the labeling, <laughs> uh, so that anybody can walk up and, and really wire it if need be. But sure. yes, all, the gig rig is powering, you know, the H9s and and everything else. It's such a such a great system. And yes. so here's here's one side note that I love about the the Daniel's power supply, the fact that you can uh, it's all modular, yep. so you can add and take away as you need be. But also the the power leads themselves. You can cut them yep. because that's been the bane of existence for so many players' boards. Is you you get this this uh, power supply and it comes with many cables, but they're all like three feet long, yep. and you just it's, it just becomes a mess. You have to tuck them so away. This and, is yep. awesome because you can just measure it, cut it, and you're done. But yeah, the 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 G2 is so easy to use. It's a, just a looping system where everything is going into this. Yep. Um, and then you simply come down to your to your loops, turn them on and off, and that's it. It's really really, it's really simple. Isn't it? yeah. Channel switching is over here, so I can tell you if you're interested in how everything is actually routed. That sounds we good had to, to me. Do a tiny bit of thought for it. Okay. And let's go over here to the. This is again is Daniel's uh, Cinco Cinco, just a junction box. Yep. In and out, and you can see Demarzio. Demarzio put together a, a beautiful uh, color-coded snake that here for us. That is fantastic. Yeah, great stuff. Um, and of course, it goes along with the tape. Like I said, we like to be super obvious. <laughs> so, from the, so this is the guitar in. So right now, I'm plugged directly from the guitar into this, but Go, we yeah. would usually be using this, which comes from the wireless. Yeah, so, so the guitar to the wireless yeah. into here, but this venue is particularly yep. noisy, according to Jarrett. Mm -hmm. um, so today, we're just going with the cable. So. Uh, the guitar comes in and hits the input of the G2, which then feeds the loops that are going to the compressor first. Again, it's loops, so you know the order in this case is not um, super uh, priority. Yep. But the Monterey, the Tumnus, the DB, and the Mini Tube Screamer are all in the first couple loops. And then I'm coming out of loop, let me think about it for a second. I'm coming out of loop eight. Okay. And going to uh, amp input. Right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, yes, that's right. I have to think about it for a second, yeah. Coming out of loop eight, so I'm coming in, feeding these pedals here and the wah. Yep. Uh, coming out of loop eight to the amp input. Mm -hmm. So then the signal is obviously getting back to the front of the head. Yep. So then we're coming from the loops, uh, the amps loops send. Yep. Right here. Coming in here and going to the return Go of here. loop eight to start feeding loops nine and ten. Yep. Which is your H9. Which is loop nine and loop ten. And then the output of the whole system, yep. you know, it's in series, it goes from the last loop to the output. So um, since we're feeding loop nine and loop ten, then we're taking the output of uh, output one of the G2 going to the amps return. Got ya. Yes. Um, so that must have taken a little bit of thinking about, but well, it's it, not that complex, is it? I guess. It's not when you when you get down to it, but um, the one thing I forgot to mention was we're coming from the amp send right here yep. into the volume pedal because, like I mentioned, the yep. you know the uh, volume, volume pedal in the is in the loop, yep. and then out of here, that's where we're coming back to the return of loop eight, feeding loop nine, feeding loop ten, back into the system, and then out of the return to the amp to the amp loop return. <laughs> Um, and then we, you know, the uh, of course the G2 does channel switching, which we're using here yep. on remote switch number three, which is feeding this, which is going back. So it's all very cool, very self-contained, yep. um, just one easy snake to set up. Yeah, yep. just one snake. And uh, yeah, it took a tiny bit of thought, and I had to email Daniel, and he's like, "Okay, this is how you do it." So it's yep. all. I don't take any credit. He did it all. No, the man's um, a genius. Very clever yeah, indeed. Absolutely. So that's the board. It's really simple. Fantastic. Okay. Well, let's move on to the amps. We'll yeah. have a look at um, what you're doing over there. Okay, let's look at the amps, Dave. Good Tell us go. all about the amps. Okay. Uh, well, this is the Friedman BE100. This is the one that I bought back in 2012 and used on the, the last world tour. Um, and it's just a monster. As most people know now, Friedman has blown up. Yep. And the BE100 is, uh, they have so many models out and they're all great. Um, but this is, this is uh, the older version of it. And I, I would have to put this one next to the new version to really hear the difference. Sure. But I just love this amp so much, so I, I continue using it. 
These are my settings. Game is gain is is dimed, always. <laughs> but even though the gain is dimed, it's still very musical distortion. It's still very articulate. Yeah. Um, 100 watt head, four EL34s. Um, it has all the mods and stuff, but I actually am not using any because I think the amp by itself, it's just natural sound is so is so good. If I was playing much quieter, I might start to engage some of the sure. uh, some of the mods. Yeah. And then we're just running it into two. Orange 412 with vintage 30s, mm -hmm. um, mic'd up with 57s, one on axis uh, to get that great classic 57 on a vintage 30 kind of sound. And yep. we run, we we run, we run one <laughs> off axis with a bit of an angle just to soften up that aggression. Is there? And are you miking the furthest furthest speakers away from one another for kind of isolation reasons, or, or did you choose that were they the speakers that sounded best? You know, um, no. Uh, in standard procedure, you would listen to each of the speakers, <laughs> and you would want to pick the best one. But we we're like, okay, this one's good. And That'll that one's do. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, and sure. And they're sure. separate. Um, yeah. And we started with this one, which is the, which is one that I mean, my rig is mono, so we really only need yeah, one yeah. mic. Sure. And I'll usually use that one because it's away from that. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah. that. Um, but um, we run two again, just to blend the two together. It's a great sound. Okay, so tell us about this guitar, Dave. Yeah, so this is, um, I'm using a pair of PRS7 strings out here. This one is my main one for this particular tour. Uh, this one was built in 2010 by PRS's custom shop. It's maple over uh, ash with a maple board. Nice. I'm sorry, a flame maple, maple neck. Wow, that is some serious flame. And uh, yeah, PRS's necks are always just Yeah, man, it's stupid. crazy, pornographic. So good. <laughs> Uh, and an ebony board, and DiMarzio, uh, these are PAF7 humbuckers with a DiMarzio Blaze single. Okay. And this, as far as I know, is still the only 513 seven string that they've done. Really? Um, wow. Which is a five way, but then there's a three way mode switch which takes you from single coil mode yep. to low output humbucker to high output humbucker. Right, so okay. you can go from Strat to SG to well, that's cool. you know, super two sets of humbuckers high gain kind of thing. Effectively two outputs on the humbuckers, that's great. Yeah, it's super it's, cool. It's really cool and super, super versatile. During yep. the show, I'm constantly switching between single coil and humbucker and it's, it's kind of you know, the best of all the sure. worlds happening. Uh, as much as possible in, in one package. So that's the main one for okay. this one. And this is the one that I used a lot on the last tour, which is, uh, you know, a standard custom, uh, PRS's custom 24, but a seven string version of it. Uh, no top on this one, it's just a piece of ash. And it's nicely worn by now, because again, 12, 13, 14, and into 15, this was my main guitar. Yeah, some nice little dings going. Yeah, it's, it's, it's get, definitely character. gotten the, uh, the abuse that it required for, nice. uh, for lots of traveling. We did actually just swap out the pickups. They used to be cream. Oh, right. But I decided to put black, it's the same pickups, they're PAF 7s. Just a color change. Uh, we just wanted to do something different with it. Okay. Um, and uh, obviously this is another uh, flame maple neck. Yes, very and nice. Board. And um you know, it's, it's just a beautiful guitar, and, and we actually just did two new guitars, but they were not ready for this tour. They're going to be ready for the U.S. tour, and it's going to be another seven-string. And literally on the spec sheet, it, it, I wrote flame top as crazy as it gets. Nice. And we're staining <laughs> the top, the neck, and the headstock all the same this multicolor thing that wow. they've got. Wow. It, it's go and I'm sorry, and the back of the neck. I think the body's just going to be a uh, kind of like the other one, more of a black uh, stain on ash. But it's going to be ridiculous when it comes out. Okay, we need to see that one. Can't look. <laughs> yeah, looking forward uh, to seeing that. I know they're they're working on it now. I got some emails, um, and they're working on it, so uh, it'll be ready for the U.S. tour. But uh, probably even before then, and pictures will be abound. Nice on the interwebs. Awesome. And this is like a gold top. This is this is a fully gold oh, man. top, back, neck, everything. This is uh, an S2. Oh yeah, right. Okay. This is this is one of their S2 models. It's a basic uh, 24 fret, two humbucker kind of thing with a with a tap on it. Um, and yeah, it's a gorgeous, just all gold, sparkly uh, kind of thing. And we use this one for the detune song. So it's like C. Everything's down a whole step, okay. and then drop C. Right. And then we bring the C back up to D for like one of the songs. So what's the string? It's a really geeky question. What's the string gauge on that then? If it's eleven, eleven, yeah, fifty-two, yeah, eleven to fifty-two no. on this one. No, <laughs> eleven to forty-eight. Eleven to forty-eight on this. Just one. Just gonna yeah. quickly spin around. Say hello. 
Right, fantastic. Anything yeah. else, Jones, or is that they've got the acoustics as well? And then you the acoustic and play this the guitar. is uh, a PRS uh, Angelus, yep. which uh, I, I used. Uh, on the last tour. Um, Which I'm a big fan of, I love those guitars. We actually had a pair of these and I was using them to open the shows when I was playing the acoustic stuff with yep. Steve. Mm -hmm. And I gave this one to Jarrett after the tour, because he was awesome. Yeah. And this is Steve's uh, Jerry Jones guitar that he used, that he's been using ever since Zappa days. Right. And uh, that's it, and this is Jarrett's awesome. world. Jarrett, uh, Jarrett guitar tech extraordinaire. Tech. How you doing? Hey, good. Working on the Boingo. Yeah. Not the Bongo, not Boingo. Boingo right. Boingo. So, it. thank you so much, Dave. We thank are looking forward to enjoying thank the show. Thanks for having me. I love the guitar hour. Oh, thanks for watching it. Tune yes. in as much as possible. Absolutely. We will see you next time, guys. Thank yeah. you so much for watching.